Thank you. Thank you and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a great pleasure to be here. And congratulations to our colleagues from Oreo for the great success of uh, achieving such an amazing event. It's an honor for me to be among you here, and it's a great moment in the history of life where the world have announced a new sustainable development goals, um, pivoting the way forward for us within the coming 15 years. And it's a great honor for me to represent Reach Out to Asia, who is a member and working under the umbrella of Qatar Foundation, a foundation that is set to unlock the human potential and build the capacity of the human mind within Qatar. A promise that is very challenging, and yet it's the time. Why is it the time? I come to you from a region, from the Middle East, where more than 50% of the population is under the age of 30. It's the age of youth, but most importantly, the Middle East is the place where most of the natural disasters and the man-made conflict is coming from. So it's the time for us to find a solution, but most importantly, to engage those who are a, a very big part of uh, the solution, and it's the time to engage them. Why is that? Basically, let me share with you um, a photo that I saw when I was walking around in um, Stockholm during the summer. It says, don't grow up, it's a trap. Very funny thing, you know, but at the same time, you know, at some point you can say, well, I kind of agree with that, you know. When you were young, all the possibilities were there. You were the hero of your time. You were the hero of the world, you know. And as you grow up, you know, sometimes you will have those moments you will be so proud of a small thing that you have done. And life would come and smack you at the back of your head, right? You know, it would sit you straight and, you, would, you know, uh, the more you grow, the narrower your vision would be towards lives and opportunities and lessons learned and, you know, scorecards, monitoring and evaluation and so many things that would really narrow your mind and yet, you know, you will be caged and present within the laws of life that somehow you would feel unable to, uh, you know, to escape. So it is somehow a trap. However, let me talk to you about a few lessons that we have learned by working with youth. So basically, it's the time for youth. As I, as I mentioned to you, Reach Out to Asia has focused on a simple task, which is engaging youth in community service. You know, by creating the youth who, are, who would be responsible for shaping their own future. And now this doesn't come by designing programs, you know, hosting events, having keynote speakers, but most importantly, putting the youth as the active player within the event itself. How does that come from? Let me give you small notes that we have learned as we're dealing with youth. Number one, youth would have a very short attention spam. And I'm not trying to be stereotyping here. Of course, there are a lot of you know, uh, people who are outside of that law. But they will listen to you, but for a short term of time. If you're not relevant, if you're not making a case, the time of podiums and written speeches is, 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 has been gone for, very, <clears throat> sorry, for a very long time. You know, you have to stand there. You have to, to talk from the heart. And you have to have a message that is short and yet convincing and, most importantly, empowering. Once you got their attention, here's the thing. The youth will not wait. You know, you will give them, a, a, you will give them an idea. You will inspire them. But don't wait. You know, they will not wait for you. You will have to have an action plan. You have to get them engaged. You know, this is our youth conference in power. And as you can see, they are the ones on the, st on the, on the, on the stage. It's not me. It's not one of my staff members. Once you get them the idea, put them in the stage and hold them responsible. Get them to be the ones standing in the room, talking to each other. And this is the third thing that we have learned from, uh, from dealing with the youth, is that they will listen to you, but who's the best person that the youth will listen to and get their advice? It's not me, it's not you, it's the youth. The youth will listen to the youth. And this is a very important thing, is that if you will give them the message, make sure that they will become the agents for change. And once you give them this sense of a trust, you know, don't tell them I trust you. Give them the trust, you know, and that's the next thing, you know. 
get them, for, get them within the field. Give them the tools. Show them that they are the ones who can make the difference, you know? And then you will see how they will take it forward. The third thing is, the fourth thing, sorry, is take the back seat. You don't always have to be the one steering the wheel, you know, and them sitting in the back. Give them the wheel, give them the steering wheel, and sit at the back and enjoy the ride. Why is that? Because how many of you were there when the, the Millennium Development Goals were announced? 15 years ago, it seems like yesterday. And yet, here we are, where the world have announced new Millennium Development Goals for the f coming 15 years. So those who are 15 right now, within the coming 15 years, they will be 30. They will be the ones taking the leadership and shaping the future. It's no longer the time where we can say the youth are tomorrow's leaders, you know? It's not valid anymore. They have to be given the leadership. And as you can see, in the field, you know, once you give them this sense of a trust, and most importantly, the credibility that they will be the ones changing their future and working with each other, then you can see how the results are coming. And here is an, a, a conference that we have been uh, holding for the last eight years, which is called Re Empower. It's a conference that has started small, locally within Qatar, with around 90 youth in attendance. However, we watched it growing organically and bigger and bigger. But how did we do it? We didn't have the magic trick from the beginning. We learned a lot of lessons. And the most important lesson, as I mentioned to you, is basically ownership and engagement. They have to see that this is their own event. So the way we design it is basically they're the ones who are doing it from A to Z. How is that? Six months, even before the event starts, there is a, a Rota Youth Advisory Board who are embedded within the organization. They will be the ones who are designing on the theme, deciding on the theme, doing their research, saying that last year we had this theme, this year we feel that this theme is the most important to us and we want to discuss it. They will do the research on the speakers, the workshops, the talking points, and even, you know, uh, engaging them in, in, a, in a panel interview. So even the youth who will attend our conference, they don't just apply and come. They have to be interviewed to have this sense of, of, of seriousness. But it's not me and my team who would interview the youth. It's the youth who will be interviewing the youth. By doing that, we give them the sense that this is their own event. It's their invitation. They are the ones who are holding the invitation card. But most importantly, is that you're giving them the tools that they will learn for the future. For example, for you to interview someone is something that I did when I became a head of a section when I was at the age of 27. So now someone in high school would learn how to int uh, the interview skills. And what kind of skills does that give them? Body language, communication skills, negotiation skills. So actually someone who's 15 is further than me when I was at the age of 27. Imagine this person when he's at the age of 27. God, my, I have to be worried about my position right now, honestly, because there will be a lot of competition. And again, we live in a very fast world, you know? Now, you don't have to write a letter so that someone will hear you in another uh, part of the world. We live in an age of connectivity and sharing of information. And this goes back to my point about the youth will listen to you, but not for very long. Why is that? Because of mobile phones. I can see some of you right now looking at their mobile phones while I'm talking, you know? And I'm trying to be as relevant as possible. Imagine talking to you, the youth, on a podium with the talking notes, you know, three minutes and you're done. Your 15 seconds of fame is gone. They're waiting for someone else on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, God knows what. But now let me talk to you about one of the most important events that we hosted lately which is the World Humanitarian Summit and the Youth Consultation. For those of you who don't know, the world will be meeting in Turkey in 2016 to reshape the, the, the humanitarian system. And the world is consulting on how is that going to look like. However, the youth weren't engaged, and we hosted the only summit that is only focused for the youth to talk to themselves and to come up with a solution and a resolution. A solid uh, result that came out of that is the youth declaration uh, about, you know, uh, the, the youth um, 
consultation and declaration for the humanitarian summit. I wouldn't talk for very long, and I will let the youth to talk about this event and you know how this looked like. So I'm happy to share with you the video about the World Humanitarian Summit. And as you can see, we got them to sign on that. So this is their declaration, and they are the ones who are making it. And together with them, we were here in Geneva last week with the World Consultation uh, Forum, and then hopefully, inshallah, in Geneva uh, in 2016. And this is a picture of one of the Empower conferences that um, we've hosted. And, it, and this is an event that has become even international now. So let's take a look at the video, and I hope that you would enjoy it. Thank you. We are hoping to engage finally youth in the policy for UN and finally to have some concrete action plan for youth. It's not easy to get people excited about running such a major youth forum globally and I'm just delighted that we've been able to include youth in our consultations. This event will provide, hopefully, a platform for youth to enhance their knowledge on current global and regional challenges to meet the humanitarian needs and facilitate discussions on youth contribution to humanitarian actions. We see them in every conflict all across the world, from Latin America to the Middle East to everywhere. So it's getting, you know, so far from the real core of the issue that we are talking about human life. So we, we, we need to shift this. This youth consultation has impacted the first since a quarter century and this acknowledgement for the role of young people. I think the message of the youth of the world who are gathered here in Doha that it's time to engage them in a strategic way, not only as beneficiaries or refugees, but also as partners and the early responders who are going to connect the dots from the early response of a crisis to helping the recovery and the road to recovery is all about youth. I think it's very important that youth are the ones that are speaking and finding solutions because there's something that older, like the older generation lack, which is communication. And thankfully, that's the, the main focus that we have as youth, like really strong communication skills. We have experienced the change that has been taking place in our world. But this is only a milestone and this is not the end. We'll be discussing a lot of different ideas that run. Campaigning and lobbying and advocating and writing to your members of parliament, right? And at REACT, we basically said, what is Rota's youth's uh, legacy? The last two days have been a historical event uh, during this turn of uh, reshaping the world humanitarian uh, agenda uh, for the 2016 summit in uh, Turkey. Uh, Rota has been very privileged and proud to be an active partner during this dialogue, the advocator for the youth voice uh, and to enable the youth to become an active uh, citizen uh, and a leader uh, reshaping their communities to the better, inshallah. And now we are having the award ceremony presented by Sheikh Aisha bint Falih Al Thani. We have very concrete outcome in terms of a position paper. In this position paper, we uh, try to articulate what are the different issues, why are they related to youth, and what would be the concrete action that youth can do uh, to solve the humanitarian crisis. I am very confident that uh, humanitarian issues are in good hands for the future. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And a last word from me is wait for us for Turkey in 2016 and beyond. Give youth the uh, power and the trust that they will take the future and they will lead it. And I can guarantee it for you, you wouldn't be let down. Thank you very much. <laughs>